You know that bumper sticker, don't mess with Texas? <laughs> Greg, they're not selling those in New York. No, I don't think they ever have. The New York Red Bulls messed Houston up over the weekend. Extra time goes to the rodeo next. Welcome to Extra Time, everybody. Alongside Shep Messing, I'm Greg Lawless, and I am almost speechless after what we witnessed this past weekend, which really wouldn't be very good for the show, but it is a huge statement for soccer fans in the U.S. because we saw some special stuff this weekend, including Real Salt Lake getting into the conference finals, Chicago vanquishing their playoff nemesis, and Columbus just going about their usual business as the best team in MLS. But that was all a prologue. The real story, of course, the New York Red Bulls, who rose up on Sunday and gored the two-time defending champion Houston Dynamo 3-0 in their own backyard. I mean, no one saw this coming. Well, except you, Chef. You called it just last week. Well, Greg, I hedged my bet a little bit, but I did think this had the potential, and it turned out that way. It was the biggest upset in the history of Major League Soccer playoffs. Definitely. So how did this come to pass? I mean, let's break it down. Did Houston just finally break down after playing so many games this year? Yeah, Greg, I don't think it was a function of that because they did the same thing last year, got the job done, won MLS Cup. They have a very deep roster. I don't think that was the problem. We also would have seen it over the last month, I think, if that were the case. So what did happen? Was it maybe that they lost their edge? Because if I looked at it, they didn't really look very hungry out there. I think maybe that's a little bit of a factor. I think they got the equalizer late at Giant Stadium, and mm -hmm. maybe they felt the series was won, but I, I don't think that was it. Keep it in perspective. Houston dominated this game. Soccer can be a cruel sport. They outshot New York 16-7, to but tactically, this was an upset in the making because Houston plays a high back line. That's true. New York had the speed to beat them. Well, the speed was Dane Richards. He was a monster on the day. The guy is as quick as a water bug. And against Houston, he was as sharp as a dagger. A goal, an assist, and he set up the penalty that Juan Pablo on hell finished. Yeah, this was a revelation, Dane Richards, and many people, myself included, <laughs> yes, have been yourself. critical of him. <laughs> sometimes not a great crosser of the ball, sometimes doesn't make the right decision, but you gotta give him credit. I mean, in this game, the biggest game of his life, he ripped the Houston team apart. Well, he almost single-handedly did it himself. I say almost because New York wouldn't be charging into the conference finals without an out-of-his-skull performance from goalkeeper Danny Sapero. It wasn't always pretty, but the second-year man got the job done. Hey, Greg, this is becoming a Cinderella story, and I thought the first five, ten minutes of the game, he was a little bit shaky, Danny Sapero, but a cross came in, edge of the six-yard box, he comes out very strong and aggressively, boxes it out, I think that gave him confidence. There was also a couple minutes after that, the Brian Ching incident, when he started kicking the ball up in the air, and Ching almost scored. I think that was the turning point in the game, actually. Yeah. If Houston scores the goal, you feel they're coming on like barn burners, but Danny Sapero showed his athleticism. He stayed with the play, got to the ball before Ching. Well, Sapero made several big saves in the second half as well, but what about Brian Ching? Other than that play, the big kahuna was invisible on the afternoon. However, Houston can't be happy about this one, but maybe they can take some solace in the fact that they can take out their anger from this game on Firpo from El Salvador in a win and advance situation for their final Champions League group stage match in late November. Well, Greg, maybe that's a consolation, but kudos, congratulations to a worthy two-time defending Houston team, MLS champions, two years in a row, they'll be a new champion this year. And it could be New York. New York now advanced to face Real Salt Lake, who earned a gritty 2-2 draw at Chivas USA on Saturday. It was a heck of a game, wasn't it? I mean, the 2-3 matchup in the West was the only one that produced a winner in the first leg, so this second leg meant that Chivas had to come out and attack. Unfortunately for the GOATs, they could only come up with the tie, and RSL moves on. Well, I'll tell you, when you talk about a series where both teams play good, technical, skillful mm -hmm. soccer, yeah. this was it. You have to give credit to Chivas. They came out, they got the early goal, and you think maybe they can build on it, but they ended up chasing the game, and, and too little, not enough time left. Kleschen misses a shot at the end, and they couldn't get it done. You think Razov misses that chance? No, I think Razov <laughs> buries, <laughs> buries it. in the back of the net. Certainly. The most interesting move of the game, however, probably came in the 72nd minute when RSL coach Jason Christ put Robbie Finley on for Clint Mathis. And we've been given Jason Christ, rightfully so, a lot of credit this year as a motivator, as big a Big fans. We're big fans. Motivate, but here he showed some real tactical, technical yeah. prowess. I mean, that's a great move because at that point in the game, Chivas really chasing the game, only leaving two players, three players back. So rather than put in a defensive sub, 
puts in speed, and you know what speed does. Oh, wow, speed kills again. Now, in the middle, it was Javier Morales who was the catalyst, and he'll have to be even better on Saturday when New York comes to Rio Tinto Stadium. By the way, I've got a nickname for the new stadium, The Mine. Look it up. And it's the Western Conference Championship that they're playing for. These are two teams that are going to be obviously going after it. How do you see this one happening? Now, I like this game, Greg. I really do. If you're looking at the Salt Lake team, they really play as a team. And they have Morales, arguably one of the best players in the league. But if you're New York, you've got Juan Pablo Angel, you've got Dave Vandenberg. I think this is a pick em game. Well, neither of these teams has ever made the MLS Cup final. So Saturday's game will be historic no matter who wins. And you're right about it. Both teams have attacking weapons. Angel Vandenberg, Richards for New York, obviously. Morales, Yura Musician, who's been hot toward the end of the season. Kyle Beckerman. If they're all locked and loaded, this game could end up being a pretty high-scoring affair. Well, it could be a shootout, but then again, you know, I'm watching the goalkeeper situation. Nick Romano's had a great year, but will the Cinderella story for young Danny Sapero continue? Well, we'll find out Saturday on Fox Soccer Channel. If the story in the West went off script, the teams in the East stuck to their lines. Act 1, Chicago's overwhelming destruction of the depleted revolution at Toyota Park Thursday night. Shep, what stood out to you in this game? Well, Greg, I think when you look at Chicago, they have an array of attacking weapons. And teams, they focus on Brian McBride, they focus on Blanco, and Chris Rolfe has been unbelievable. Well, he's having a great season toward the end right here. He actually didn't have a great game in the first leg, but he was terrific in Bridgeview, getting the first goal just before halftime. The turning point, however, came about 10 minutes before that. The Revolution's Jeff Lorenowitz had to leave the game after this mistimed tackle by John Thorrington. Well, a little deja vu because they played earlier in the year. Lorenowitz with an early red card, and Chicago walloped them 4-0. I thought Thorrington should have gotten a red card on that play. Because I don't. I think a yellow card was right. Why a red card? Well, I thought he was from behind. I thought it was studs up. I thought it was that violent. But nevertheless... It's not really red card or not, but once New England lost Lorenowitz, I think they lost the game. That's true. Lorenowitz's departure meant New England were without four regular starters in the lineup at that point, and Chicago took advantage of the greenhorns that came on. Rolf was left unmarked by Amicia Egwe in the first goal, and right after halftime, Lorenowitz's replacement, rookie Pat Phelan, was beaten on a set play by Wilmon Conde. Well, oh, Greg, I think in games like this, big players like Blanco rise to the occasion. And I think, again, after Lorenowitz went out of the game, I think it was over for New England. Blanco's got a way of creating attacking possibilities, but he's also got a way of really getting in players' heads. Oh, he got under the skin of the Revolution players all night long. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. And, and New England, at that point, they were chasing in the game, yeah. Blanco dictating the pace of the game, and, and it was all Chicago. They deserved the victory. It was a 3-0 win for Chicago. They certainly deserved it. So, in the East, the number two seed, Chicago, moves on, and they will travel a few hours into Ohio through Indiana to face the number one seed and Supporters Shield winners, the Columbus Crew, who took care of Kansas City with a 2-0 win at home. Shep, Columbus dominated in chances again. They outshot Kansas City 13-2 in this game. But it was really the defense that got this one done. Yeah, you talk about a well-balanced team, and we've talked about the attacking ability of Columbus, but I like to focus on their defense. Remember, the first game in Kansas City, even though Kansas City got a goal, they really didn't get into the flow of the game offensively. Chad Marshall, Danny O'Rourke, Brian Carroll in the midfield, they've been unbelievable. they got Padula at left back, so on the defensive side of the ball, they just really put a blanket over Kansas City. Yeah, they did a great job. Kansas City, however, did commit the ultimate sin in an away playoff game. They gave up a goal in the first 10 minutes. It was a great combination, though. Columbus, by two of the most underrated players in MLS, probably, Brian Carroll and Brad Evans, who finished it off for the goal. Yeah, I know you love both those I, players, and, and, and Brad Evans, I mean, what goals amazing, he's been amazing. scoring. Uh, that goal that knocked D.C. United out yep. in the final game of the season got New York Red Bulls into the playoffs. But Brian Carroll, Siggy Schmidt identified him early in the year. One of the most underrated and important players in the league. He's been awesome as a two-way player in the midfield. Well, he has the experience also with D.C. United having won an MLS Cup there. And Evans is a player that I've come to really like recently. He seems to be a perfect complement for Guillermo barros because of the ground he covers both defensively and getting into the attack, opening up space for the Argentine to work in. The bonus... As you mentioned, he has goals in two of the last three games. Now on Thursday night, the Eastern Conference Final takes place. Chicago at Columbus. And I'm sure that the crew supporters out in the Nordeck will be louder than they ever have. I'm sure Chicago will travel a big horde of their fans from Section 8. 
Columbus have never made it to the MLS Cup before. Shep, what's going to decide this game? And this should be an awesome game. I, I really like it because these teams mirror each other. Both really good in goal, strong defensively, mm -hmm. good wide midfield play. They both have finishers up top. But I think the key, Columbus, they have Scalotto pulling the strings. Chicago, they have Blanco. Which guy will have the better game? And don't forget some other big names. You have Brian McBride and, and obviously Robbie Rogers. McBride, how ironic that he's going back to Columbus where he made his reputation. That game is going to be Thursday night on ESPN2. Don't miss it. <sighs> Time now for the Volkswagen Wow Moment of the Week. It's a day at the races for New York. It's New York at Houston in the playoffs through bowl by Ubi Parapovich, Tadane Richards, Split Suede Barrett, and Bobby Boswell, and roofs it past Pat Onstadt. Look at Dane Richards. Wow. Player of the Week performance from Dane Richards. He also added an assist and created a penalty shot on that one. Perfect for the Volkswagen Wow Moment of the Week. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Extra Time, the conference championships taking place this week. Shep, give me your Western Conference Championship prediction. Put me on the spot. Yeah. Okay. I, I love the season where Salt Lake has had their playing at home. Red Bulls, 3-2 to two with a late goal. Now, I'm going to disagree. I lost faith in Real Salt Lake last week. I'm going to stick with them this time. RSL into the MLS Cup Final. Now, what about in the East, Chicago and Columbus? What about the score in that game? I picked the score. What's the score? Salt Lake, Red Bull. Okay, move on. <laughs> Eastern Conference, what do you got? I, I, you know, I keep going back and forth. I really don't this have a, a clue. One, isn't it? I, and so the only clue I have is these are the two of the best matched up teams in the league. I'm going to give it to the Supporter Shield winners. They're playing at home, but one nothing with a late goal. I'm going to go with Chicago. Two to one again. And I'm going to say overtime in this one. And I get this, Gonzalo Cigares scores the overtime goal. You're getting carried away. <laughs> well, if any of those happen, I'm sure we'll talk about it next week on Extra Time. So join us and we'll kick it around.